This is going to be just a short lesson on rational functions and I will put the link to where I taught you how to graph rational functions back in the section on parent functions. So rational functions again are the graph of y equals 1 over x or in function notation f at x equals 1 over x. Quick review, they have two very key points 1 1 minus 1 and minus 1 and they have two asymptotes the line y equals 0, remember that is the x-axis, and the line x equals 0, this is the vertical asymptote, this is a horizontal, so called horizontal asymptote, and this is a vertical, because it's up and down. And remembering from transformations that these asymptotes will shift depending on whether or not you're shifting you're translating your x's left or right, or the y's up or down. So if we had, um, if we we're translating up, this axis would move up. If we were translating left or right, this one would move left or right, and that would be seen in the denominator. And the horizontal or the vertical shift up and down would be out here somewhere, like a plus three or something. Okay, so. Something new today that you never saw before is that functions can have holes in them. Holes, yeah, like a little dot, a hole in the graph. Holes. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. And the reason you'll find holes and the check to know if there will be a hole is to check what makes the denominator zero. In this case, when three is plugged in here, that would make the denominator 0, so x can't be equal to 3. But if you also plug that value in here, you would have 3 is 3 squared is 9, minus 18 is negative 9, plus 9 is 0. So you get 0 in both the numerator and the denominator. 0 in both numerator and denominator. And that means there's going to be a hole in a graph. A hole. Yes, now watch, I'll show you how that happens. So if we factored this like we would if we wanted to simplify it, you would say, well, this multiplies to 9, adds to negative 6. This happens to be a perfect square trinomial, another lesson I've already covered. And it would be x minus 3 quantity squared divided by x minus 3. So you can see what would happen here is that I could simplify this expression by dividing 1x minus 3 into one of these, and my function would actually be this. So if you wanted to graph this function now, you would graph the line. So you graph the line, the simplified function, and where you have x is equal to 3, so if I plugged in 3 here now, and I said, well, what's f at 3 going to be? Because I know it's a restriction for the denominator, but we've cancelled it out with this other one. So now this is what I'm going to gra graph, but f at 3 is equal to 0. So the whole will be at whole at 3 and 0. So I'm going to graph that for you over here. Now f at x equals x minus 3 is simply a line. It's a line, degree 1. It has a y-intercept of minus 3. That would be right here. And it has a slope of 1. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And if you have a nice ruler, make a nice line out of this, which would be a really pretty thing to do. You would draw it like this. But, like I said, we have this issue that when x is 3, y is 0 means there's a hole in the graph. So I literally will draw a hole here, an open circle. This is my hole. And that, this line, represents this expression here now. So you have to identify the hole. You don't just graph x minus 3 and say, oh yeah, just simplified to a line, because this function had the restriction that x could not be 3. And you need to figure out what would the height of that function be when x is 3. 
and I plug that into this equation to get the height. Okay, so the other thing that can happen with rational functions when you're simplifying them is something like this. So I have f at x equals x plus 2 over x squared minus 4. So to simplify rational expressions, you want to factor it first. Put this in brackets. It's a good idea because that way you'll know that you can't divide numbers over this way. I've gone over that a few times now, but it's a very important skill to make sure you do not do that. And the bottom is a difference of squares x plus 2, x minus 2, square root of x, square root of 4, add and subtract them. So if I simplify this now, I have 1 over x minus 2. So what does that look like? So these are the only possibilities, you know. You, you either end up with a hole in the graph or you end up with something like this. So I cancel this one out. The restriction was x cannot be equal to plus or minus 2, right? It can't be plus or minus 2. So if I asked you to graph this and you hadn't seen this function initially, you'd say, oh, that's a translation to the right. So let's write that down here. So this is a horizontal translation right two units so it's the graph of 1 over x that's this one way up here right it's this one only we're translating to the right two units so when I move to the right two units that means that my asymptote is going to go over two units as well so my vertical asymptote is now here at x equals 2. I've moved it to the right. So you see here this restriction x cannot be equal to positive 2 just means this is where the asymptote is. So if I asked you for a mapping rule for this you'd say well x and y's I'm going to add 2 to my x's and I'm going to leave the y alone. So your key points 1 and 1 would go to 3 and 1, and minus 1 minus 1 would go to minus 1 plus 2 is 1 and minus 1. So 1 and minus 1, and 3 and 1. So you can see that my graph has been just shifted over to the right, like this. It still has this asymptote here. We should write that in as well. This is still here. We didn't move it. It's part of the function y equals 1 over x. So this is still y equals 0, x equals 2, and my function has moved over here. Now, I'm not going to dot this one. I shouldn't have because it's a continuous function with a vertical asymptote and x equals 2. Now, we're missing one thing, and that is, well, what about this x equals minus 2? How does that affect my graph? So when you have x equals minus 2, because we divided it out, that means that was a whole. So when x is minus 2, I will plug that into this equation here. So f, if f at x equals 1 over x minus 2, f at minus 2 is going to be equal to 1 over minus 2. Minus 2 is minus 4. You can put the minus sign anywhere you want, of course. So at minus 2, so this was minus 1, minus 2. Right here, there is a hole in the graph. And the coordinates of it are minus 2 and minus 1 over 4. And that's what you need to know about simplifying rational functions where you're actually dividing something out and that you get a hole in the graph and it's something new and exciting. I'll put the link to graphing parent functions for you as well. Please like, subscribe, and let me know if there's something that I haven't covered yet that your teacher wants you to know about.